Final Fantasy VII Rebirth director says purpose of entertainment is, quote, to give the people the will to live today and tomorrow. Because if your shit sucks, you just want to die. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. When did it become a bad thing to not give the fans what they want? Like, when did that shit happen, Gray? Yeah, ever since, I don't know, uh, when the funding started for ESG, I suppose. But, yeah, it's like, th that used to be so normal. Like, that used to be the thing. What That's what propelled all these games, all these movies, all these TV shows to be where they are. It's because you, you serve the fans and you serve them well. But for some reason, that had to change just because you had the money already. I, I, I don't know. And maybe, yeah, you, it's like, for those really in deep to the ESG, it's like the DEI, like, I think the only way for them to learn is like if they don't have any money at all anymore. Like, like that's, that's, that might be the only way to fix them, to completely fix them, to start from yeah. scratch. Yeah. All right, let's go and read. It's according to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth director Naoki Hamaguchi, entertainment should not seek to extort, preach, to or simply distract a given audience, uh, but rather than give them the will to live today and tomorrow. Uh, Hamaguchi, whose other notable Square Enix credits include serving as a programmer on Final Fantasy 13 Trilogy and as co-director on the previous Final Fantasy VII Remake, offered his take on the role of entertainment in human lives while fielding questions at the March 2nd Roundtable Q&A sessions hosted by Filipino news outlet Rappler and attended by various Ooh. members of the Island Nations video game press. Gray, Ooh. I'm pretty Rappler sure you're going to places. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yo, you, you, you guys are moving on up, man. <laughs> Rappler going places, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised Rappler is there. Uh, what? Oh, there was. Yeah, I never knew there was an event. This. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Hmm. Yeah, Philippines finally making more of an impression in the industry, I suppose. But yeah, uh, ho I hope to see more of this kinds of takes too. It's like, yeah, we badly need entertainment to be entertained again. Not not a, not a mirror of real life. If we wanted a mirror of real life, why, why would we buy the, the piece to begin with? Because we already have real life for free. <laughs> why, would, why would we need to buy something that's depicting real life? It's it's stupid and it's people. A lot of these people don't realize it's so counterintuitive to what entertainment is trying to do to make people um to make people feel either inspired or to get away from the toxicity or the difficulties of real life. We need to go back to that. Then, yeah. All right, let's continue. Following the number of lengthy discussions on Rebirth's development, including how he approached implementing the title's new gameplay mechanics, such as the ability to quickly switch characters on the world map rather than doing so through a series of menu prompts, and how its team looked to Sucker Punch's Ghost of Tsushima for inspiration as how to handle their game's open world mechanics, Hamaguchi was presented by Ungeek Editor-in-Chief Rob Yatko, with a slightly more personal and reflective topic of conversation. How does it feel to have such a great effect on gamers, especially during this day? And do you have a message for those waiting for this kind of game? In turn, Hamaguchi ass asserted, to answer your first question, I myself respect the original game very much. After almost 30 years and remaking this game, having the responsibility of remaking this game is the feeling that comes straight away is i don't want to let the the title let this game down and let the fans down yep basically cater to your fans and they like and i know that this game it's not according to what i heard it's not selling as well as it should right? yeah that's what that's what i've seen too but in its defense it's just so far the data is for japanese digital that's the only data available so far Am, am I mm, okay? Am, am I not mistaken? Or un unless I'm wrong. As far as let, I know, the only data so check. far is Japanese digital sales. No Japanese physical sales and worldwide hasn't been taken hasn't taken into account yet. Okay. So the most recent one is um is from two days ago. Uh Helldivers is going crazy. 
a, a comparison. Yeah, to this yeah. Game. And yeah, ha- like, because health Africa is like forty bucks, thirty or forty dollars, right? Yeah, and I heard really, really, yeah, I heard really, really good feedback about the Hell Divers too. Like, yeah, it's like that's uh, yeah, I'll I'll probably talk about it at the end of the podcast. Like, I need to pivot my content a little bit because, like, I I feel like I'm missing so much. I miss Pal World. I miss Hell Divers. I I miss I'm missing so many games because of how I'm doing my content right now. So I might need to pivot mm-hmm. the way I do things. I'll I'll talk about it more towards the end, but. But yeah, uh, I hope Rebirth does well because of yeah, we, we've seen the Tifa like they're it's like they're it's like it's this the this, this game feels like Square Enix going back to Jesus. <laughs> that, that's what it feels like. For me. <laughs> Come back to okay. Jesus, Square. So um, according to this, uh, the game is only so uh, as as of reading this, uh, two hundred and sixty three thousand copies. A significant fig, uh, figure, but not enough to reach the heights of his prede- uh, predecessors, which is remake. That's so seven hundred and three thousand. So it's like more oh, than sorry, double. How, how many again? Sorry. So two hundred and sixty-three thousand copies sold for Rebirth so far. Okay. And uh, what's it called his predecessor, which is remake, uh, which came out in two thousand, uh, two thousand twenty, sold seven hundred and three. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've I've seen that one. Uh, here's my th- my thoughts about that. That doesn't necessarily mean that rebirth is bad. That's just uh, a symptom of a concern that I had since the very beginning. For me, it's like I up to now I still do not agree that Square should have divided it into three parts. For, for me, that, that that's for me that's more of a detriment to the game than it is a boon. Because like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's like it's like any TV show or anime, like, of course, you're going to expect, like, there's going to be less people in season two compared to season one. I, that, I, for me, that's the effect that it's having right now on Rebirth. So it wouldn't surprise me if the third game will even have less than Rebirth in terms of sales. Because, like, by the time you reach part three, maybe not as many people will tune in to, compared to the ones in part one. I, mm. that, that's just my take. It, it's, like, it's just, it's normal behavior for people to, to veer off. What to not continue the story? Yeah. Now, now, and here's the thing. I think one major reason, and Jose Ataco did did, did did mention it too. Uh, it's this console exclusive. Yeah, that's another thing. It's like it's only it's be, be, like up up to now. It's like there's so many people who do not have a PS5. Yet there's plenty, plenty of people who have a PS4. So they're. Yeah. Uh, I think they cocked themselves by not releasing it to PS4 and. Yeah. To withhold releasing it to PC too. So once they yeah. release it to PC, I think it'll get a significant boost, in especially if they oh. mod that Tifa outfit. It's like, come on, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna, yeah, yeah. Jose Ataco says it's uh it's only on PS5 with 50 million consoles compared to PS4 is 110 million consoles. Yep. So in the original Final Fantasy VII remake came out in uh, 2020, uh, 2020. In around, I think April or I think or it was originally in April, and then I think I think it got moved to June, and um, yeah, it was huge. But it was on PS4, and then uh, when you if if you um you can actually get a free upgrade if you bought Intergrade or Intermission for uh, Ufi's DLC, and then you can have you can play it at 60 frames on the PS5. But the thing is that if you compare the actual graphics. Like the graphic, because I'm playing on uh, on uh, graphics mode right now. Because I was playing on performance, and then now I'm playing on graphics mode. Graphics mode is absolutely gorgeous. Like, but and and, you, and, it's, and you the frame rate is okay. The fa- I'm the used to the okay. frame rate. That the frame rate is locked at thirty. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's locked at thirty. And I know that Square said that they are trying to make uh, performance mode look better. It's because performance mode in some shots does not look great. Because I played performance mode for like the first two streams. And then ever since we got the Coastal Cell Soul and I saw Tifa's huge knockers, I switched it to graphics mode because I had to see it in HD, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I got my priorities straight, chat. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, like my original, my, my eyes weren't like used to the, the 30 because it's so like slow. And afterwards, the, 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 the jiggle physics of her tits made it bearable for me. And then I got used to it. So, but but when, when I was in that scene where you go uh, meet Dine, in um in, in uh, what's it called again the the prison in Corral. Uh, it looks really really good, like and it's not. It's look I I know I say that like oh graphics isn't everything anymore. It's all about gameplay. I think gameplay is key and it's mm-hmm. followed by story, which is true. 
the gameplay itself is god tier i think they, they took whatever from remake and made it better right so like for me gameplay is good already but ne next is like a good story i already know where the story goes so what about the graphics so the graphics looks really really good and it's not cgi rendered cutscene it's all in game so like if you're looking at it like it looks really really good and i i think that's the reason why ps4 can't handle it it's because they wanted to work on this game in unreal, uh, unreal engine 5 but it wasn't working out for them so they basically did an unreal version 4 but they did like in-house modifications to make it look as good as it can right it's mm -hmm. not done in unreal 5. so mm -hmm. um i do agree with you that like it is a detriment to them to having splitting to three parts but this but the amount of stuff they added to just this game alone compared to the first game is huge it's really yeah really yeah yeah i understand where you're coming from I, I get it it's like they added so many it's like it's a huge visual upgrade they added so many new places like but it's so hard to get example like me it's like oh you should get rebirth oh but it's part two i still I'll, i still need to play part one whereas if you compare it to getting just one entire complete package that's easier. It's a lot easier to convince people to get in. It's like, oh, you mean I have to buy part one? Oh, I have to buy Intergrade just so I can appreciate what's going on in Rebirth. It's kind of a hard sell, in my opinion. Yeah, it it's is. It's a hard sell. Like, I, and I, th I think that's when people who are like, you know what? I'm just going to wait for the final version to come out and buy all of it at once. Th that's where I am right now. That's where I am. <laughs> Admittedly, I'm, despite the hot Tifa outfit, I, I'm going to wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'll wait. Soon. Oh wait, I'll, I'll I'll get my Coomer content elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's continue. Let's see. Moving to address Yatko's second inquiry, the Rebirth director then continued. So this is a message to people that are aspiring to join the industry, having played this game. There are many forms of entertainment today, not only gaming, but movies, streaming, YouTube. But the base is the same. It's uh, to give the people uh, the will to live today and tomorrow. If the title you created allow people to have this feeling, then that's a great feeling, he concluded. If you don't forget this, then I'm sure you'll be able to create a game that has the same effect on people. Uh, in lending support to Hamaguchi's philosophy, thanks to his applying to the recent uh, rebirth, the game has been met with overwhelming praise. Its censorship issues notwithstanding from both players and critics alike. At current per video game review score aggregator, uh, Open Critic, the game currently holds at a 93 out of 100 across 112 critic reviews. Meanwhile, on sister site uh, Metacritic, uh, 1,545 users' reviews have left the latest Final Fantasy with a score of a collective of 9 out of 10, which is pretty damn good for a Final Fantasy game and a remake at that. And the thing is, I know a lot of people did not, still does not like the Nomura ghosts and the whispers in the game is because that's the shit that's like crazy and like you're changing the game and stuff like that. So the fact that it's, it has like a, it has an A score, which is actually pretty high. Mm -hmm. See, uh, and that's to say nothing of our own Peter Pishke, who is reviewing the game for Bounding in the Comics, found himself absolutely blown away by its quality. It's rare that I find a game or any story in that format that makes me think, feel, and hope and grieve in the way Rebirth did. Even after I stopped playing, that's an achievement that should be celebrated and experienced by all. And I think that's what we should be doing as creators. Um, if your fans want big titties, give them big titties. But the game also has to be good. Yep. Right? It's like, imagine if the game I gave you is like had a bunch of hot girls in it, but the gameplay and story sucks. You're only going to be there for like the first three minutes and then wait 15 minutes for the cooldown and do it again. And then you're only going to pump and dump once. Versus if you give a game that has really good girls, hot characters for both girls and guys, and then you have very good gameplay and story to tell, you will pump and dump multiple times. How do you feel about this? Yeah, yeah I agreed. It's like, yeah, it's those are nice to have first of but importantly the most important aspect is it's really the gameplay it's like how in how in depth is it is it what actually fans want will it keep fans wanting for more but yeah and also it's like at the same time what's going on in the current climate of the gaming industry uh you really they really nerd 
kind of they're falling victim to Hollywood too. They're overblowing their budgets. Like bigger doesn't always mean better. It's like I think they're learning it the hard way. Like it's it's okay to scale down your games and properly target your audience. And that's something that the triple A uh, publishers need to pivot towards and learn. But time will tell if they'll be able to adjust. But I'm pretty sure some of them won't be able to. And sadly, they might uh, get out of business eventually. Yeah. But uh, I I think overall, uh, I think always catering to your fans is always a good thing. Making movies. It's like, oh, you're just, you're just you know, making your fans happy. It's like, yeah, that's what. Do you not want money? It's like, yeah. If you're fan, and the thing is that, like, what a lot of these uh, DEI, ESG, um, Sweet Baby Inc. companies want, and Black Rock, uh, Black Rock, uh, State Street, Vanguard, Nautic, all, all, all of these company want, they want, they want a global access of a fans, and um, but when you do that, you're trying to cater to new fans. And at the same time, you are leaving your faithful OG fans behind. Yeah, it's like it's like the saying. It's like if you're trying to cater to everybody, then it's meant for nobody, basically. Mm -hmm. that, that's basically yeah. that's what that's what's happening. So it's like they're trying to come, they're trying to go after the the the, the green haired weirdo on Twitter. Like it, it it's gonna end up pleasing no one because of that. If you're gonna go after those kinds of people, but yeah, uh, those. Anyway, they'll still continue trying to fund these type, those kinds of content or those kinds of projects, so, which will end up being in the dumpster fire. I don't know. It's a, it's an up, it's a law. It's gonna be a long, long battle against these kinds of uh, institutions. Sadly. Yeah, and the only way for them to uh, to understand um, that we mean business is um, with your money, with your wallet. Mm -hmm. um, if a game is um it's like turning woke and it's it's, it's gonna be shit and you don't like and you're not liking where it's going don't don't buy it don't pay for it don't do anything um and it's it's a collective thing right like um people will see it it's like oh um like i don't like what they're doing with this character you know what like i i i'm i'm, I'm not gonna I'm, I'm gonna dip like i'm not even gonna ca care about this stuff and then they're gonna see it. Of course, the first and foremost, they're gonna blame their uh, their audiences. But the thing is that we know what happened with Madam Web. We know that shit bombed, and it's not making any money. It didn't even make back as money. It barely made back as production money. But remember when we read an article and we were live with um, uh, what's called on side scrollers when we saw that Sony is moving in the way of Silk to cater to their male audiences, which is what they should do. It's because that is your main fan base. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot like a rough battle. Like you said. Yeah. All right. Let's read some, uh, comments. But yeah, I, I yeah, think it's ahead. like now it's a good in, in terms of the gaming industry. It's like if stellar blade does well, it's going to inspire more Asian, not just South Korea, more Asian devs to follow suit. It's like uh yeah. I'm also looking forward to Black Myth Wukong. That's oh, coming yes, out this I am year. too. Yeah, right. So if that one does ph phenomenally well, I think this is gonna it's gonna be the start of the rise of China, the rise of Cur South Korea as uh as developers in a global level. So which I will be all for. Like I think even people in the West will be buying games from there rather than the crappy ones from the west if they if they still could need to double down on sweet baby or all these consultants if they could need to double down on those then they'll continue to fail thanks for checking out this segment of the project egg row podcast if you like what we do here please like share subscribe hit the notification bell and you will know next time when we go live we do go live every saturday at 8 p.m once again we are just getting started tons of more video to come thanks and we'll see you guys next time